In fact, I'm not sure that this is a good idea for me to make a tutorial about Iridium developer because the English language is not my native language. Generally, I'm speaking Russian. But uh, after I published a couple of short tutorials uh, for my Russian colleagues at my YouTube channel, <clears throat> I got some messages from uh, foreign people, from foreign Fuji shooters, uh, where they request or ask me to <clears throat> To make some short tutorial uh, about this brilliant raw <laughs> converter. So forgive me for my mistakes, forgive me for my English, but I will try to do all my best and uh, to explain you the basic principles of working with a Iridient developer. I'm shooting Fujifilm X-T1 camera since March 2014 and uh, I was really upset when I loaded for the first time the raw file from Fuji to Adobe Lightroom. I'm crazy about sharpness, I'm crazy about details, texture and uh, in Adobe converters I cannot see what I expected to see so <laughs> first weeks I was shooting only in JPEG but <clears throat> during these weeks I started to try to choose to find some software which allows me to get the best from Fuji RAW files. I tried a lot of programs, freeware, like RAW Therapy, like uh, LibRAW Converter. Also, I tried Capture One, Photo Ninja, <coughs> but uh, I found Iridient developer the best software for proce processing of Fuji RAW files. In internet there is not too much information about how to work with uh, this software. And uh, the one place I can show you and I strictly recommend uh, just to have a look at Thomas Fitzgerald blog. This guy makes a crazy job. He explains a lot of uh, things, how to work with Fujiro files in different software. And uh, I also recommend you to buy his ebook Processing X Trans Image. It's not so expensive, and uh, if you purchase this book, you can easily understand how to get the best from this software. So, for those people who just want to understand, is it worth paying money for one more software? I will try to show how I am processing files in the video. I can admit that this is only my workflow and uh, maybe I'm not right in some cases, 
but <laughs> let's start. So, uh, the interface of this software is really simple. And I can say that uh, this program works slower than Adobe Lightroom, for example. But <clears throat> let's not pay too much attention to the speed because in this software we can get really good result. What I recommend to do first is go to preferences and uh, mark checkbox here enable advanced settings options. Well, in fact, that's all. And uh, we can go to window menu. Open histogram. And uh, I also recommend you to make some changes in this window. I created a new preset for exporting files to my computer. I choose file format TIFF 16 bit per channel. I uh, strongly recommend to work in si with 16 bits per channel files because you will get a more flexible file for further post-production in Photoshop. I also chose color space sRGB because generally I posted my pictures in my blog. Then the second tab image size. Here I fix the values for final exported file. From drop down menu, I choose scale to max maximum 5000 pixels. This is a little bit bigger than our original raw file. But don't be afraid to upscale or upsize your final tip. Our X-Trans matrix in our cool Fuji cameras allows us to upsize our files up to 6000 pixels. So our 16 megapixels matrix can be resized to 24 megapixel matrix. But I will leave 5000. Resolution 300 pixels per inch. And scaling method Iridian Ultra Res. The guy who wrote this software, Brian Griffin, made very very good job. This software does the best the mosaic for Fuji RAW files. So I recommend you to use Iridian Ultra S method. Well now you can also make a preset for renaming your files. I live without any changes. And also I created on my desktop this folder Fuji XT1. And uh, I also indicate to save 
all processed raw files in this folder. You may create any folder you like, or you may save <coughs> exported files in the same folder. It depends on your preferences. It depends on what you like. So that doesn't matter so much. Uh, what concerns the settings, that is all. I think that is enough. Let's start to process an image. Here we can see we can see uh, we have the, our default settings. In the website where you can download Iridian Developer, you can also download presets, film simulation, Chrome style, this is simulation of classic Chrome, Pro Negative High, Standard Sepia, Soft, Vivid, that doesn't matter. Uh, you can find these presets and install it <coughs> into your uh, computer. So if you like film simulation, you may use it here. You also can save your own presets after making some changes. You go to File, Save Preset, and in this window, check or uncheck, <laughs> and save uh, your own preset. Well, let's start. I expect that you are familiar with a lot of sliders and uh, I can briefly describe what we can change by moving from one side to another. So if we move exposure to the left, we can get darker image. To the right, lighter image. This is simple and this is obvious. Fill light. This is new slider and uh, it helps us to make picture a little bit lighter as like we use additional big soft box for example in studio. So you can increase the brightness of the picture or decrease. The difference between these sliders there is some difference. And uh, you can, for example, make your picture a little bit darker, but add fill light, and you will get this type or this kind of uh, <coughs> photo. Let's return to the default. The slider for contrast makes our picture more contrast or less contrast. If we add contrast, we get a more vibrant color. I prefer to work uh, not touching contrast or in some cases 
increase the contrast just a little bit. 15 is more than enough for me. Black fine tune. This is for darker areas. So we can make picture lighter, for example, in dark areas. This shadow. This shadow. Or we can make darker, all dark areas in a file. The next slider is very interesting and I like it very much because you see we can choose default settings for our raw file and increase to 50% this slider. This slider affects only on shaded areas, not on dark areas, not on light areas. Only shaded. It looks like you use some <coughs> soft boxes to light the background. But you can see that in dark areas you can get low contrast. We can see all details, but these dark areas has low contrast. So we can add a little bit contrast and uh, we still can see details in shadows, but the picture looks more Smooth. Brightness shadows. Almost the same, but not exactly the same. If we increase brightness, we will get a faded picture. Uh, now we need to increase contrast just to return picture to the normal view. If you decrease brightness of shadows, you can make picture darker and more dramatic. I think that uh, combining these sliders you can reach best result, smooth result while processing your files. Something like that, for example. Of course, we do not need to see all details in our shaded areas. It's not necessary, but if you need, you may, uh, how to say, reveal <coughs> the texture, the details, some information in dark areas. Well, brightness mid-tones. In fact, we can uh, work with uh, brightness or darkness of shadows, mid-tones and highlights. It's very convenient. And uh, each slider works for a specific area. Mid-tones works for all picture in middle range. If we have take a look at histogram, so mid-tones are somewhere here in this area. You see, see the difference. 
or for example like that. And brightness highlights works only in highlighted areas. You see these white spots. This all highlighted areas they become brighter. Or you may reduce the brightness of highlights. But we have two more brilliant sliders. Highlights neighborhood adaptive and extreme highlight recovery. This is great. Uh, <clears throat> I can say thousand thanks to Brian Griffith who make this software only for these two sliders because just imagine that you are shooting in bright sunny day and you have uh, you have uh, <coughs> really light sky <laughs> if you move these sliders to the right you can reveal the details on the sky or in the sky sorry just for example <coughs> you see rolling 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 that is what I mean when I was talking about <laughs> the speed of this software it takes time to render the picture Let me drop to default. <clears throat> well, uh, it's as you can see again studio shot, but we have some highlighted areas and we cannot see too much details here. Double click on picture uh, brings us to 100%. You see, here in shady areas, we can see the texture of the dress, and here we cannot see it. Now we can see the texture of the dress. If we move to the right this slider, we can see it better. So it was like that in the original, and uh, with these sliders, we can reveal details in overexposed areas. So this is very, very useful sliders. Let's go back to that picture. So, if I process this file, I would do like that. Increase a little bit highlights. A little bit decrease the exposure. I like uh, underexposed pictures because we can see a lot of details. Add some more fill light. Add a little bit of contrast, reveal shadows, say 50%, brighten mid tones a little bit, and we can also increase highlights. If it's too much, something like that. And with this slider, I can make not so light these bright areas. You see? See the difference? Lighter and a little bit darker. Something like that, for example. Let's go to the 
next tab color here we can work with white balance with temperature you can take you can choose auto one is similar as should so you can choose auto two and take a look what the software offer you or you can move sliders manually and make picture warmer or cooler for example like that but here we can have we have three different sliders which allows which allow us to change the color temperature in three zones in shadows in midtones and in highlights and i know that strobes in this studio fire with temperature 480 I can see that the overall color is a little bit reddish, so I can decrease the red by moving tint to the left. So it's almost the same as tint in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. So greener, more magenta. So minus th three or minus two is enough and I would like to make highlights cooler whiter let's say mid-tones a little bit warmer just a little and shadows I can leave without any changes or I can make a sort of toning. Warmer picture or cooler picture. By moving this slider to the left, you can produce a sort of some vintage film photo. So if you like some toning in Photoshop, you may use these three sliders to change the colors of your photo without entering Photoshop. Like that, for example. Like that. Or like that. The next slider works with saturation. The same result as in Lightroom. Move the slider to the right, we can get more saturated colors for the whole picture. Move to the left, less saturated colors for the whole picture. The slider for vibrance works with mid range of colors i'm calling it for skin tone and you can also change the hue make it like that or like that this is strong changes but sometimes, if your picture is a little bit reddish, you may move to plus three or four just to kill this red tint. And here. So we have in this step 
everything what concerns the color. The next step, let's move it to default. Okay. Let's move to the next tab. Here you can convert your file to monochrome. Of course, you may choose a film simulation. For example, monochrome with green filter. Like that. But In this tab, you can manually adjust your black and white picture. You can make reds lighter, so this tab works with black and white picture or we can use split toning there are several presets already in this program so you can choose what any you like whatever you like it's like like that for example or something like that. In my everyday workflow, I can say that I'm not working with these sliders. It's not my goal, but you may you may like to convert your raw files and uh, get the final result without Photoshop. Next up works with curves or curves. How to say it correctly in English? Great job and great tab. We can work as with RGB curves as well as in lab or LAB. Curves. So here we have lightness, only lightness, something like that, for example. Oops, too much. We can add some more color or decrease saturation or we'll just work. In channels alpha or channel B. So if you like working with curves, if you know how to work with curves, you may work here. It's much more convenient to work with curves in Iridian than let's say in uh, Lightroom. And also you can work in RGB channels. Darker, lighter, work with reds, work with blues. Whatever. So this is very, very good tab to work with your photo. Only by using curves. And let's go to my favorite tab details, sharpening, noise reduction, and blah blah blah. I already told you that I'm crazy about sharpness, crazy about texture, details, and uh, this is really great uh, 
algorithm or mechanism to work with details. Let's make the picture a little bit lighter. Like that, like that, like that, for example. Double click on picture, 100% size. This is the radiant reveal method of sharpening. In most cases, this is the best method for Fuji raw files. Unfortunately, I'm not shooting landscapes, so I cannot give you any useful advice about sharpening your landscape photography. I'm shooting portraiture, I'm shooting fashion, I'm shooting commercial and advertisement. So my method, my values of these sliders, they, for me, of course, for me, they are good to work with portraiture. I leave this method, Iridium Reveal. You may use anything you like. I advise you to try each of methods. And just to have a look what is better for you. But the guy who created this software uh, he <clears throat> made this program mostly for Fuji camera users. So the values for these sliders, uh, how to say, are optimal for different types of photography. What I am doing personally, just to satisfy my taste, I make reduce 55 edge detail, 160 and texture mixed micro details, 15. We can see the hair. We can see the eyebrows or lashes. We can see all small details. They are very, very sharp, but not over sharp. And what all, <coughs> what else, what, no, sorry. Uh, what I am doing also, I'm switching to auto, <coughs> fixing hot and dead pixels, and as far I'm shooting at basic is ISO 200. I switch off the noise reduction, but not by switching off this check mark, because if we hide this check mark, our hot pixel and dead pixel filter will not work. I just put to zeros these value, values and uh, very often I also put to zero or at least at to one this slider. Now you can see some chromatic aberrations here on hair. We can also see it here on the metal plate. But for me, it's not a problem to fix these chromatic aberrations locally later in Photoshop. On another layer, hide it with a mask. And then reveal only in these places where it is necessary. But switching off noise reduction 
chromatic aberration and more, you can get even more details in skin, even more details in texture of clothes. If you don't want to fight with this moir later in Photoshop, okay, it's up to you. Switch it on, switch on color, and you will reduce. But you will get by switching, by leaving values, some values here, you will get the skin tone color, how to say, it, something like average. If we switch off, we can see the difference in skin tone. For me, this is more important. Let's go to next step, <clears throat> lens. Here you can enable camera settings. You can fix chromatic aberrations. You can try automatic process or you can fix it manually. <laughs> of course, you can correct some distortion. If your lens has distortions or work with vignetting. For example, like that, like that, like that. And move your vignette on X and Y axis. Move it, for example, to the right and uh, to the bottom right. Like that. But this is like final finish. If you like, you may use it. The last tab is the tab out. So here we can save our raw file or <coughs> export it. But here we can fix the horizon line. Here we can crop our picture Something like that and uh, do you remember I told you that I am upsizing our picture to 5000 pixels here oh sorry it's not here it's here window yeah 5,000 pixels believe me I'm cropping this picture I'm cutting let's say about 20% 20 25 even 30 35 percent so the physical dimensions of physical size of this image is more uh, less than the original. 
but after exporting it to 16-bit uh, TIFF, I will not lose any details. I will not get uh, the picture with worse image quality. quality. If you are working with uh, one picture, you can press this button. In this case, you will get drop down window and you can choose where to save your TIFF file, sRGB, resolution, scaling, methods. Or you can send this file to batch. If you working with several images, by pressing <coughs> Shift Command C, you can copy whole uh, whole values. You can copy all what you all changes that you made. For example, like that. Copy settings. Show me the window. Copy settings. Ah, sorry. We can copy all settings or several settings. And if you want to copy several settings, for example, without cropping and changing the orientation, you can switch off. Then you can copy, take this picture and press Shift Command V or Face Settings menu to this image. Render, 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 render. My old MacBook Pro <coughs> takes wastes too much time. And Shift Command V, paste settings to the picture. Or Command Z, undo changes. Uh, so you can mark one image, press Command Shift A to select all images or to select them selectively. Then go to File and Batch Process Selected Images. We'll export these images to the folder which you indicate in this window. Save to folder or in the same folder. <clears throat> In the beginning, I told you in preferences to check this checkbox. Enable advanced settings options. In tab exposure, we get this button. Raw camera advanced options. If we press it, we can get some sub menu or additional menu. And if you know the values of colors, if you're very sophisticated and uh, can work with colors by using numbers, you can mix colors. It's like a sort of channel mixer in Photoshop. You can add, for example, in red channel some blue it's too much you can add in green channel some red or decrease some red in green channel you can add saturation or decrease saturation you can also adjust hue 
but this sub menu I recommend to use those users who really can work with numbers. To return to the main tab, just press hide. Also, we can edit the camera curve. Now we have default camera curve. So let's take camera default, default, and you can edit the camera default curve. We can add gamma, for example, or make it darker, make it lighter. We can indicate black point, white point, gray point. <coughs> so this is a sort of curves in this step, but this affects to your camera and you can save it as a preset for specific uh, circumstances of shooting for a specific studio or specific location. So, in general, this is all. Uh, I hope this information is useful for you or will be useful for you. I again recommend you to buy this ebook and to read it because it is written in your language and uh, Thomas describes very uh, thoroughly and precise all settings, all sliders. So he explains how to work And uh, if you have some questions, ask them in comments. I will try to answer. Thank you very much.